Hello and welcome to the NBA betting picks video for the Los Angeles Lakers at Denver Nuggets for Wednesday, October 26th. I'm your host, Matthew Mono from Lamps. I'm joined here by our NBA expert, Andrew Norton. We have an interesting game here. Los Angeles Lakers, five and a half point road dogs traveling into Denver. A figuratively and literally hard place to play because you can't breathe because it's a mile in the air. Over under 229 and a half. Russell Westbrook, doubtful. Drew, how are you feeling about the game? Yeah, so on one hand, the Lakers are going to be incredibly thin in their backcourt. No Dennis Schroeder still, no Russell Westbrook. It's going to be a bit of a problem, but on the other hand, the Lakers now don't have to worry about him touching the ball a lot, which you know will force LeBron and Anthony Davis, two more efficient players on offense at this point in their careers, to score more. So it's hard for me to really evaluate and say, well, it's a good thing that he's not playing or it's a bad thing that he's not playing. I will say defensively, it does help at the point of attack a little bit more for the Lakers. Might inspire them to play a little bit better defense when they're not getting beat off the top of the key constantly and having to rotate and collapse in. So something to keep an eye on for sure. But this is a matchup of one team's awful offense versus another team's horrendous defense. So Denver's given up an effective field goal percentage of 59% to opponents through its first four games, which is almost impressive how bad that is on defense. It's amazing that they're 2-2 two and two to start this season. Most teams with that kind of stat would be winless, and it wouldn't be, wouldn't be close, a la the Portland Trailblazers like the second half of last year. So... What's keeping Denver in these games is their three-point percentage, which is just shy of 42%, good for uh, third in the league, and their effective field goal percentage, which is second in the NBA. So weirdly enough, for as bad as their defense is, their offense is just as good. The Lakers can't put points on the board if their life depended on it. Like literally, if their franchise depended on it, they have not been able to put points on the board. They are dead last in the NBA in offensive efficiency by a wide margin. And it is only one week into the NBA season. So this is a little bit, you know, of an overreaction. But if this is what we're going to be looking at the whole season, they won't make the playoffs again. Like, it's bad. So it's kind of, I'm kind of at a point now where it's like, all right, what's going to give in first? or what's going to step up first, I should say, the Lakers' ball-stopping offense or the Nuggets' ball-watching defense. It's really, really difficult to say. Um, You know, the Lakers, through their first few games, are shooting 21.2% from three, which is also dead last in the NBA. 7.5% less than the next closest team. Matt's getting bored with my arguments over here. (laughs) <laughs> it's early and it's early in the morning it it's very early and it may i'm stuck on the spread on this one i'm gonna stay off of it as a matter of fact and i'm gonna go ahead and punch the over in this one which you know that's a drastic thing for me to do because i hate betting point totals i can't stand it so if i'm off the spread that should be kind of saying something yeah, I think my analysis for this game, and I made a little bit of a comment in the last NBA video, if you watch that one first, or if you're watching this one first, you get to hear it for the first time. I think player prop value early on the season is far surpassing the value in spreads and totals, and that's where I am in this game. I do not want to touch the 5.5 spread. I lean the Nuggets. I actually, Drew, I think you're going to hate me for this. I, I kind of lean the under in this game, because I do think... It's the Lakers' ball-stopping offense that uh, that wins out against a terrible defense in the way of they're not going to score enough points to hit this over. I think the final score ends up being something like, you know, 117 to maybe 105, which then obviously Denver would cover comfortably in that scenario. I don't know. Like, this game has a lot of variance. I think it could go a lot of ways. That's why I'm not betting either. It's more of like if you're asking my opinion and we're, you know, 
talking at the bar, I'd be like, yeah, I guess I, I'd go Denver in the under, but I'm not going to be placing money on it. I'm not going to make it official. But a lot of the reasons Drew just went over. Like, it's early on in the season, so we still don't know for sure who these teams are. But what it's pointing at is this game could end up a lot of different ways. And the fact that both these teams, I feel like, played like such crap against the Portland Trailblazers, which no offense to the Trailblazers, but they're the Trailblazers, is... It's just making me wonder, like, what what should I expect from this game? Like, I, I and I don't know. And I think you guys probably coming to this video don't love that analysis. You're like, well, I, I come here to find out what I should be doing. And it's like, uh, my honest opinion is stay away from this game in this sense. Just go straight to player props, and I think there's going to be tons of value there. Because less variance. We know how these players maybe are going to perform. We know how their usage is going to be. We can't really judge how the overall efficiency, the overall tempo of this game is going to go. That's that's where I'm at for this one. I would have to agree. It's it's chaotic right now. So, yeah. All right, let's move over then to player props. And Drew, would you like to go first? Sure. I am targeting a couple of things. The first one is LeBron over two and a half threes. On DraftKings, it's minus 140. I don't love how juiced up it is. If you can find it around minus 120, minus 125-ish, something like that would be really ideal, in my opinion. The Lakers are going to have to shoot a lot of threes to keep up with Denver. Denver has been a high-scoring team. The only times they haven't scored big numbers in the first few games this year is when they played against very formidable defenses or they've had extremely off shooting nights, which case I don't think this is the case for either of those situations to take place. So I do think that there's going to be a lot of opportunity for LeBron to shoot. Plus he's shot 10 threes, eight threes, nine threes in his first three games. So there's plenty of volume there. You know, the Lakers, they can't exactly rely on anybody else to hit threes right now. I think LeBron's going to be shooting a whole bunch. I would also target Jamal Murray under one and a half threes at plus 145. I know it's kind of crazy to say, but he's only hit two threes in one of the three games thus far. And more importantly, he's only shot four in each game, four three-point attempts against Utah, four against Oklahoma City, four against Portland. He's not shooting a lot, so at least from deep. So if that trend continues, then you're asking him to go two for four, in which case he's very capable of doing, but the volume not exactly there right now for Jamal Murray. And at plus 145 odds, I don't hate it. Yeah. And just a quick note, LeBron is at minus 140 on every single sportsbook for over two and a half threes right now. So that's unfortunate. But by the time you're watching this, it may change. So for me, I'm a little torn on this one. I think I want to place a unit basically on Nikola Jokic to have a fantastic game. And the way I'm going to do that is split a unit half and half. Half of it's just going to be on a straight triple jump, triple double in case he does you know, lay off the points and become a facilitator in this game. Another way I'm going to do it is going to kind of hedge my bets that he is the main guy scoring points and he becomes less a facilitator for this one. And that's by going over on a few of his props that aren't, it makes it quite not a triple double, but I think you're getting incredible value. Him over 27 and a half points at plus 120. We then go to assist and we go down all the way to over seven and a half assists. And then we go to rebounds for Nikola Jokic, and we go up to 11.5 over. So basically, plus 380 odds, so quite a bit longer for him to go 28, 8, and 12 versus plus 250 for him to go 10, 10, and 10. And you're probably saying they're being like, well, that seems a lot easier than what you just said. But in all reality, I think there's a better chance that Jokic scores 28 points and gets 10 assists in this game. But I do, again, I want to hedge my bets because I think he either gets 10 assists or gets to the 28 points. There's, Of course, there's some variance there, and he, he could not, but I think I have it very much covered there, and then it's just up to him to get the boards at that point. So I like either going for him to score, oops, 
accidentally clicked the wrong thing. Going for him to score a high amount of points or for him to, you know, again, be the facilitator in this one. So that's how I'm going to split my unit on Jokic in this one. You got any more, Drew? I don't have any more. I will comment on that, though. In two of the four games, Jokic has hit triple doubles. So I think there's very good value there. And then in the most recent one, he barely shot it. He shot four times from the field, but he had nine points, nine rebounds, and nine assists in 27 minutes. So he was right there uh, knocking on the door for his third triple-double. Opening night, I get why it's it, he didn't get there, but he, he's definitely trending towards getting triple-doubles a lot, and I do like kind of hedging that and splitting uh, a unit into halves on that because I do think one of those is going gonna, is gonna to hit. And then best case scenario is he goes 28, 10, and 12, and uh, you get you hit them both. So, Yeah, 100%. All right. Well, I think that's going to wrap it up then. So we have Drew and I basically staying off the spread completely. Again, if you're asking me, I guess I lean Denver. Um, Drew likes the over. I'm slight lean on the under. So I guess the more confident out of us two is Drew with that over. LeBron over two and a half or two and a half made threes at minus one forty. Jamal Murray under one and a half three point three pointers made. I can't talk today. Plus one forty five. I just talked about this Nikola Jokic um, kind of halvesy bet. So half unit on the triple double at plus two fifty. Half unit on over twenty and a half points. Over seven and a half assists. Over eleven and a half boards. Thank you guys for watching. As always, if you liked the video, drop a like. If you did not, a dislike. Comment down below your favorite bets. Check out the other NBA betting picks video we did for today. And uh, also hit subscribe if you have not already. Click the bell to get notified when our videos go up. And we'll see you for the next one very soon.